Chromebooks. The peak of humanity. In this video, I will be make my game playable on one. It all began when I exported my game to itl.io and I showed it to my friends at school on my Chromebook and I noticed that I was getting like 40-ish FPS at potato settings so I wanted to optimize it to at least get 60 FPS on medium settings. I also noticed that the free blur shader was terribly optimized so I remade it to be more optimized. I also noticed that when I looked at the spikes, the FPS dropped from 50 to 4. It was because it was making a draw call for each individual spike. I will cover how I fixed that later. Another reason that I want to op optimize my game is that it will be playable for more players, unlike some other games. <coughs> Cyberpunk! <coughs> Now started to search for more ways to optimize my game, like hiding moving platforms when I'm not looking. I also optimized the lava shader so it didn't take as much pro processing power as before. By the way, my Chromebook has a MediaTek 500, whatever that is, and the 4 gigabit of RAM. I also think that this has like 16 gigabytes of storage as a, and of course no a GPU. My school isn't that rich. I also solved another problem, stutters. They were occurring because of something called shader caching. I'm not going to go into the depth of it, but in a nutshell, it's just storing the shader, uh, shader while playing the level, and uh, that uses a lot of processing power. Uh, this fix uh, was really easy because in Godot 4.5, in the export menu, you can just toggle shader baker and it's done. There is also this thing, uh, this other thing called. It basically just stores all of the light, uh, lighting information in a texture file and takes the light data when it needs it. This drastically improves FPS. All of the calculations for the light happens on my machine, so it, t it took uh, like an hour to bake the whole level. This is the end of this video. I didn't reach my goal of 60 FPS medium settings just yet, but there will probably be a part 2.